anticipate the worst to get a happy ending. This eye had a beautiful uneventful vitrectomy followed by silicon eye removal and the patient complains of diminution of vision because of cataract and asks for cataract extraction. As you can see, some of the emulsified silicon oil bubbles are seen inside the anterior chamber under the dome of the cornea, which is quite common in such cases. And this can be washed out easily by injection of dispersive OBD inside the anterior chamber. Now removing some of those air bubbles by aspiration before proceeding to the next step, which is injection of cohesive OVD for soft shell technique. Remember that post vitrectomy eyes have compromised posterior capsule, quite similar to posterior polar cataract eyes. Yet, the cataract tends to be hard and the nucleus usually larger compared to the posterior polar cataract eyes. So you have to keep the rexus size large enough to allow for safe emulsification of the hard nucleus yet allows for safe implantation of a three-piece lens in the sulcus with optic capture in case of posterior capsule rupture. Hydrodissection is contraindicated. We can do only hydrodelineation. Sometimes golden ring cannot be elicited, especially in this case of pretty large and hard nucleus. Now I'm doing some rocking movement of the nucleus to make sure that the nucleus has been completely hydrodelineated before proceeding to the next step. Another issue with these cases is zonular laxity. So in order to minimize stress on those weak zonules, reduce the bottle height before entering the anterior chamber. As you can see, I'm lowering the bottle height to only 40 centimeters above the patient's eye before entering the anterior chamber. Now applying quick chop technique, I do believe vertical chopping can divide the nucleus without inducing too much stress on the weak zonules. Yet, I don't insist on complete separation of the nuclear fragments because it might jeopardize the already weakened posterior capsule. As you can see, I kept the bottle height very low at 25 centimeters above the patient's eye because increase the bottle height will increase the infusion pressure and this will cause hyper deep anterior chamber because of the zonular laxity and lack of vitreous gel in the posterior segment of the eye, making the cataract less accessible for chopping with the left hand. After dividing the nucleus, we can move now to the next phase, which is quadrant removal phase. I'm pulling each free fragment outside the lens capsule for emulsification in the supracapsular plane. At this stage, I increased the bottle height to 40 centimeters for better stability of the anterior chamber. In post vitrectomy eyes, the posterior capsule tend to trampoline excessively towards the phaco tip because of the lax zonules. We can reduce the vacuum in these settings to improve the stability. However, reduction of the vacuum may cause losing the holdability of the nuclear fragments again is the phaco tip. In this phaco platform, we can set two levels of vacuum. Initial high vacuum for better holdability of the nuclear fragments again is the phaco tip during ultrasound activation. And after a preset of time, this high vacuum automatically reduced to a lower preset level before occlusion break. So this improves the stability of the anterior chamber during phaco emulsification. In this case, I set the vacuum initially to 380 millimeters mercury. And after one second, this vacuum instantaneously is reduced to 267 millimeters mercury anticipating occlusion break. And this enormously improved the stability of the anterior chamber in the settings of weak zonules and low infusion pressure. Each FACO platform has its own algorithm to guard against post-occlusion surge in the settings of high vacuum. So each surgeon should be acquainted with such settings and play around with the fluidic settings to get the best of the FACO machine during such unusual cases. And now this is the last quadrant, 
and you can see that the bottle height is at 55 centimeters and we have reasonable stable anterior chamber remember to inject dispersive ovd before withdrawing the fecal tip outside the anterior chamber and now moving to the next stage which is irrigation aspiration for cortical cleanup remember that we did not do hydro dissection and we are left now with thick epinucleus which can be washed out easily with irrigation aspiration and finally we left with some cortical fibers adherent to the posterior capsule at the visual axis i'm trying to do some visco dissection to clear these fibers away from the posterior capsule however i failed so i tried to mechanically peel those fibers off the posterior capsule with the rexus forceps this is micro rexus forceps trying to remove those fibers opposite to the visual axis unfortunately it ends up with large break am i surprised absolutely not i was prepared for this complication now i'm doing small cut in the posterior capsule parallel to the edge of the papillary border i'm trying now to convert this radial tear to a semi posterior axis with the aid of the micro forceps now someone can argue leaving those cortical fibers on the posterior capsule and do yag laser later on however i don't like to leave my patients with compromised vision after cataract surgery for few months before doing yag laser now injection of dispersive ovd between the iris and the anterior capsule preparing for sulcus implantation of a three-piece iol checking for the integrity of the rexes everything looks fine now implantation of a three-piece lens for sulcus implantation initially i do implant the lens in the anterior chamber with the coglin hook we can flex each haptic one at a time to place it in the sulcus this haptic now has been placed in the sulcus and doing the same with the trailing haptic now the lens has been placed in the sulcus now we can do optic capture by pushing on the sides of the optic to bring the optic of the eye will behind the rexus and as you can see the lens is very well centered the optic is behind the rexus while the haptics are in the sulcus the injection of acetylcholine to bring the pupil down stromal hydration for the main wound and side ports and closure of the main wound with 10 o nylon suture as a safety measure this suture can be removed few days after the surgery so my key message here is to expect the worst to get a happy ending anticipate complications in any post retractomy eye especially if fluid not silicon filled this eye behave like eyes with posterior polar cataract and may end up with an open posterior capsule prepare a three-piece backup lens don't forget zone relaxity and no support from the posterior segment which cause excessive trampoline of the posterior capsule. Thank you.